Welcome. Welcome. G'day. <clears throat> We're uh, we're going. We're streamlining our podcast now. Yeah. Down, we, we thought we got adventurous with two cameras. Now, one's fine, mate. I think one's fine. What's, oh, we'll be back to multicam. We'll play around. We'll keep them guessing. Yeah. Yeah. Multicam's good fun. You, you know when multicam was good. Multicam was good when you when you got someone when um uh, these other uh, these other this guy and this girl who used to do my podcast when I um, used to do it out of the studio. It was a live thing. It was on Facebook. We streamed it live on Facebook. Yep, I remember it was, them. It was great. Three cameras set up, live switching. It was the tits, man. It was, yeah. so, it was so much fun. Um, fortunately, unfortunately, we don't do that now. But but that was fun, man. That was a, that was a good way of doing it. I really uh, really enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun. Maybe one day we'll get to that, yep. you know, once we get some uh, some sponsoring and monetization and all that kind of stuff happening. So anyway, we'll... Well, g'day everyone. Welcome to uh, No Guts, No Glory. Good to have you along. I'm Jack the Bear here along with my man, Bennett ben. Ferguson. Yep. Sorry, Bennett, you know who you are. I don't, <laughs> I don't need you to, you know, I don't need to tell anyone who you are. No. You know, you're, no, you're, no, the, you're, new man around t- you're the new man around town. Uh, I wouldn't go that far, but. We don't need, you don't need to be introduced. I'm on the way out and you're on the way in. That's, <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm already on the banana peel. I'm fucking, <laughs> yeah. You know, fucking. You're guiding the snaggle. way for the rest of us. <laughs> Sorry, guiding the way for the rest of us. Uh, I don't know if I'm guiding the way. I'm just putting something out there. Yep. Some people find it interesting and relevant, and some people find it a great source of amusement, and <laughs> other people just don't even know that it exists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is fine. Yep. Now today we've got um, something pretty important in the industry, as far as I know, both of us are concerned. Um, but mental health. Yeah, I thought we'd touch on mental health week because I've had a shit week myself, to be honest. I've been feeling, I was feeling very flat and feeling down. And you know, people, you know, people sometimes think that you, if you are perceived to be successful or you're doing all right, that you're flying high and everything runs great. And that's not always the case. It, it, it's it, um, you know, people may like to give the veneer of that, but. Yeah, you know, look, I've I've had frankly a count of a week, and and I, and I wasn't, and I wasn't feeling good, and I wasn't feeling myself, and flat, and down, and uh, you know, and shit thoughts into my mind as well, and and it happens, and and um, and I I know I've always I've always had to have to manage mental health, and I'm definitely heaps better than I ever had been, but the majority of my life I've struggled big time. Thirties and forties, just with depression, anxiety, drugs, you know, all this sort of shit's all very well documented, but we're just sort of covering it again today just to let people know that no one's immune from it. Um, you know, uh, you know, I had a mate who was um I was out I was out and saw him last week at an event and and he was completely off his nut and wanted to go and top himself and uh and you know, it's it's it happens to everyone, mate. You know, people think that everyone's all fucking good and happy, and uh, and then behind the scenes, it's all not 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 good at all. So, yeah. um, so there's a lot of a lot of youngsters who are dealing with it. Uh, everyone's it's not even young. It's everyone's dealing with it, mate. Everyone's yeah. got some issue that they're fucking constantly in. And I wrote a post up, you know, last week on Facebook where I said that. Um, your, your demons never leave you. You just have to, and you never slay your dragon. You you you, you got to learn how to live with it and manage it and keep it at bay. Yeah, because you, you just you, the shit that upsets you, you don't like about yourself. Or it's um, it, that's what consumes us, and 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 then you know, it, and it, it either you consume, it'll consume you, or you got to learn. Well, you'll never. Like I said, you'll never control it. You, you'll well, you'll never get rid of it. It'll never be gone. It'll yep. never be gone. Yeah, it's ma- learning to manage, um, and I guess how to get yourself out of those. One, it's recognizing when you kind of fall into those, I guess, ruts or you know, poor mind spaces, um, and then how to get yourself out of it. Yeah. And then another big thing, I guess, that compounds it in the industry is there's just a lot of one. The conversation wasn't really happened to. Hey, how are you guys going? You know, are you in a, men- are you in a mental state to do this tour, or is this is this being kind of a burden to you um, when a lot of liquor and drugs gets involved as well? Usually sleep is fucking something that most artists don't get a lot of. Um, diets, poor, especially if you're on the road. All these things contribute and just compound it um, to the point where artists break down. And, you know, and I think it's definitely more enhanced in creative industries just because of the extras that go along with it. Yeah. No. And look, you know, like while we're, while we're sort of delving into it, uh, yeah, there's... 
there's a lot more talk about it now, which is great, mm-hmm. and more e- more exposure to it. And I still I still think we've got a long way to go before people really start to be okay with um, the fact that they they're experiencing it. There's, there's still I still think there is um, stigma and shame. Uh, there's again, it's a lot of intellectual understanding. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a this is not good, and it's good that we're talking about it, and it's good that we're encouraging people to talk about it. I still think we have a way to go. To be perfectly honest with you, um, and it's good that we're bringing it up again, and we're going to discuss it. But where I want to put some focus on today is, um, you know, well, I'm happy to share my story around it, but but rather than just talk about it, about how bad it is and how it exists and the recognition of it and is to let's talk. I want to try and focus a bit more today um, on solution-based stuff, on cool. what can what can be done, yep. what I found has worked for me, you know, anything that you want to share um, or anything that we've heard that we, other people that we know who yep. have been through their own stuff and without having to name them. But... You know, and 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 I see this a lot, even just generally, man. You go online, and a lot of people are really good at bringing up the problems. So whether it's political problems, whether it's social problems, whether it's economic problems, any kind of problem, people are really fucking good at talking about it and shedding light on it. And dare I say, even jumping on a bandwagon and joining in the outrage, and it's become a fucking sport, mate. Fucking people looking for outrage. It's. I see it a lot online and now I've just learned to train myself where I sniff something like that, I just fucking scroll straight past that shit. I don't want to engage, I don't care. Because you can't have interesting or any kind of... um, You're never going to have constructive dialogue with anybody when already they've made up their mind about something, right? And that's on any issue. So when, when you've already invested and yours just got it there and you're closed off, after yeah. that, just becomes resistance, and then becomes nasty. And I have no interest whatsoever engaging, even if I am quote unquote right in my thoughts. But anyhow, so just getting onto whole solution thing. So, um, what I found is that I think seventy percent of people's mental issues usually can be circumvented, or at the very least, managed better um, in. And look, I'm not a fucking doctor, you know, but but just speaking for myself and from what I've seen around me and f- for what I – let's lucidly call it study on it. Um, I reckon about 70% of the time these things can be helped a lot by um, basically three things, um, which you touched on before. A better diet, um, some kind of exercise training movement regime mm-hmm. and – Oh, oh, four things. So, so third thing is sleep, better sleep, and um, connection. Just just being able to connect with people and having investing in, in good friendships, right? Yep. So those four things right there. So so people need to have a look at at what their lifestyle is like, and it's hard to actually admit to yourself. You know what? I'm I'm eating shit, or I'm the people around me aren't probably the best people to be around me, or I'm not, you know. And musicians especially, it's even harder because there's a certain lifestyle that most musicians, especially if they're touring and playing gigs, and I get it. It's it's a it's the, the musos, artists, creatives are not nine to fivers. We're yeah. predominantly more nocturnal based people. Um, Which even even that, I don't. F- fully believe that people like a lot of the hours they work is night Man. but in terms of the rhythm that our body runs off like it's we're day creatures we're made to sleep at night that's when the brain sh- that's when the brain rests and shifts things from short term memory to long term like that's when you actually you what you your brain and your body need to recover mm. so i think uh yeah letting artists off the hook by saying oh you know we're they're nocturnal creatures they play at night um I don't really think that that's a valid excuse. I think we actually spoke about it on this week's podcast when we did have a doctor and we had Dr. Marcus Yo come in to talk about sleepness, uh, sleep, wellness, and how that affects you. Right. Um, and one of the points he was making was if you're Monday to Friday, if you know that these things are going to happen, say if you're you know, an upcoming DJ and you've got to play at three gigs every Friday and Saturday night to get your fucking name out there, 
if you know this is happening, you can build your schedule so that you know you can have Monday to rest. You can set yourself up for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so you're getting your proper sleep so that these things aren't the aren't the majority of your actions or the normal behaviour, but these are so these are controlled situations. Mm. Um, and I think when you look at it from that point of view and even going, okay, this might just be a two-year window when I've got to really fucking push hard, mm. whether it's when you're starting a business or trying to get your career up, there is going to be those times when you don't get the sleep we need. But kind of yeah. recognising that, all right, I will get it at some point or there is a point when I can back this off or this is building to that certain mm. um, right situation. I think being aware how crucial sleep really is, um, yeah, is something that, yeah, a lot of us haven't been exposed to, you know? Yep. How often do you, do you get to sit down with someone and go, hey, let's just talk about sleep and yep. how good it is for you and what it really does to you? And that um, you, you need, you know, you, you do. You, I, I guess, sure, you could say that everyone's different, but I think the majority of the population need to have, you know, X amount, whether it's seven or eight hours. I know I, know I definitely in my sleep. I mean, last few nights I was up late because I'm just overthinking shit and uh, struggled to, so, you know, so I did all the wrong things. Went and sat in front of, in front of a laptop, you know, blue light, you know, <laughs> wrong. But I just, I just toughed it out until I just got rid of, you know, until I just was too tired, you know. Yep. Went to sleep, woke up this morning, felt like shit. You know, breakfast felt like shit. Um, needed to have a little, na- a little nap on the couch. Mm-hmm. Feel a bit better today. Uh, I, fall in, I fall into it too, but one thing I'm, I've been trying to get into and I'm, I'm not saying that I've got it down. I'm, I, I really have not been good at this, but I've got to. I'm, I'm, I'm mindful about doing more of getting morning sun. Mm. The importance of like getting a circadian rhythm going um, yep. is the, get, get out in the morning, getting out. My wife Connie, she's great. She's up in the morning. She has a coffee. She'll sit outside. You know, I'm fucking on the laptop, <laughs> flistering and flustering away. Um, you know, <laughs> you know. But but um, but that's but when I've when I've actually done that, and and I'm just talking 15 minutes, actual direct exposure to the morning sun. Um, how it, it it helps a lot and helps to get your circadian rhythm clicking. You know, because you need you need um, you need your serotonin to kick yep. in the morning, and you need your melatonin at night. Um, so that that's one thing people can do. Even if even if, even if you get out late in the day, just get out in the sun. Yeah. You know? Oh, we need sun. Yeah. We. I mean, we need to be exposed to sun. <laughs> it, you know, because we we spend so much of our time indoors. And and may, and the other thing too is, like, which I'm, I said to my wife, I said, listen, I've got to get back on this, which is vitamin D. I used to be a I used to be a real really supplement well, and I've been. I've just completely fucking fallen off the whole wagon with it, so I'm I'm going to start getting back into my supplementation. But but D three, um, vitamin D three, just absolutely essential. So especially if you don't get out in the sun as much, um, good to good to get some of that. But morning yep. sun, D three, and uh, and a glass of water, which again I haven't been very good at doing. Yep. I've been so shit lately. With even a good morning one is water. I have a big thing like this of water with apple cider vinegar, lemon um, ju- and lemon, lemon water. juice and salt. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good for your adrenal function again. Mate, lately I've been so fucking shit when it's come to my health. I've got to be honest, I've been absolutely mm. – uh, apart from go, apart from going to the gym and training, um, the rest of it is, uh, you know, I, I've, I've, you know, I've just realised shit. I've, I've really sli- – I've really – Gone off the fucking rails, you know. Let's and that, bring it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know. Well, here's the thing. It's 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 the realization, and um, is and sort of. I think one of the things about being honest about in a podcast, and now this gives me some yeah, accountability yeah. now. To like, yep. you know, I got to fucking start pegging it back slowly but surely. But um, rather than allowing it to overwhelm me, uh, just one little thing at yeah. a time, you know. Because yeah, because my uh, my um, you know being you know. I wouldn't say I've been completely off the rails, but certainly there's there's things at the moment of of late that I haven't been doing that I used to do, yep. and I'm not doing at the moment. So I'm aware of that now. Yep. But that didn't happen overnight. It just didn't all of a sudden stop supplementing. Yep. Doing late nights, sitting in front of the computer late at night, and, you know, not getting out in the sun first thing in the morning. Yeah, I mean, it, it just didn't go. But the good news is now that you're oh, aware of it. Yeah. Ignorance is no longer a an excuse, excuse. you know. <laughs> and and now I've got accountability to, to you know to and to, even to I do found it. the best thing with that is just um, building into your routine. Um, mm. So literally just that cup that I make myself in the morning. Mm. Now if I if I miss that, I crave it at the start. You're like, well, this tastes fucking shit. There's apple cider vinegar and it's salt and it's lemon in the morning. What is this? Mm. And then now like your body craves it because now it's just a habit. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Oh, I can't say I've, I've, I, I don't mind the taste. But it's just it's just the uh, I, I think. Um, you know, one of my mentors, Peter Sage, he talks about a thing called set yourself up to win. So it's getting things in place the night before. So if you're going to go to the gym next day, set your bag, set your ship by your bed, um, you know. So in my case, like, you know, putting a cup of water there at the radio yep. or, in the, or in the kitchen when I get, you know, in the morning, I know there it is. I'm, it's the, the shit's out. And yep. and they're little things, but they're, they're yep. those habits that we've got to get ourselves into and yep. that we that we kind of can... Slowly yeah, draw definitely. away from as well, but trying to draw myself back, back off the rumble strip of life yeah. and back on the highway, mate. You know, definitely. I found for me the um, it's because it's definitely easy to let it slip, especially um, one when you're working for yourself. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, there usually isn't someone that we are accountable to. We yeah. make our own schedule, we make our own fucking out, we do everything ourselves. So mm-hmm. it is easy in us to let ourselves off the hook. Um, but I found for me what's helpful is just creating this structure around it. Mm-hmm. So having it things scheduled. Because um, if like, I don't think humans love, humans need structure. Um, and I think it's kind of the, the irony that structure actually gives you freedom. If you have everything structured out so you know what you're doing, when you're doing it, you get in the morning, cool, this is gym, blah, blah. You've now got freedom that you can fucking... To do all those things, you're like, oh, I didn't go to the gym today, so I've got to go tomorrow, and then, oh, I didn't get this. Mm-hmm. You know, that when that structure breaks down, that's when it's easy to slip into um, into old or poor habits um, yeah. because it's easy. It's easy to be fucking comfortable and complacent and fucking mediocre. Mm-hmm. What's harder is to bring yourself back out and go, cool, this is the structure that's needed. I know that on a long, on a long enough fucking sample size, this is going to get me ultimately near or to where I want to be because it's like going to the gym. Yeah. You don't look fucking better the next day, but you work out, you eat healthy, you mm-hmm. do exercise every day, and in a year you're better mentally, physically, you look better, you feel better. You've got this fucking glow. People are like, oh, man, fuck, you're looking good. Mm. You know, it all, it all carries itself through all aspects of life. Yep, no, absolutely agree. And... Uh... <laughs> And yeah, just know that you, you're gonna you're gonna be on, you're gonna be off, you're gonna be on, you're gonna be off. Yep. You know, but the more but the more you get, the more you are on it. I, I, I think for me now to do those things, which is get back into, you know, supplementing, getting out in the morning sun. Especially now that we're into in this part of the world, we're now into summer. You know, summer finally got some sun that we can you know, see, which is which is wonderful. Um, so now there's more incentive, and it's it's easier to do that, but. Um, it's easy to get back on the horse. Uh, Fucking oath. You, you know what I mean? So yep. I think it's harder for people when they're starting from absolutely nothing if they're really, really unhealthy and they they feel they're really behind the eight ball. But never underestimate the the power of little steps. I feel and, like. and, excuse me, doing things incrementally, mm-hmm. you know. So, uh, so yeah. So, you know, I, I, like, well, I, look, we, I think of fitness as kind of like um, – Steering a fucking ship, like us going through life, is this big fucking ship? You can turn, like, turn. It's gonna take a while to actually turn your path, yeah. you know. But um, like with fitness, it usually takes. And well, this is for me anyway. Mm. Um, and I think for most people over the age of say eighteen to about twenty-two, usually we learn by fucking um disaster or tragedy. Mm. Usually something happens to fucking kick and go, oh shit. I've got to fucking start taking care of myself or I've got to take my fucking business seriously or mm. fuck, this relationship's going to fall apart. Something about that mm. usually has to find that extreme for us to really kick in. Um, and, I mean, that was the same for me. There was a point, like, probably about a year ago when I just look in the mirror and I'm like, fuck, dude, you you are fatter than you are. Like, I, I didn't like the reflection I saw. And then that creates a spark. It's like, all right, fuck, I've got to go to the gym. I've got to make this part of my habit because I didn't like this trajectory mm. I was currently on. Mm. And then you fucking sure enough, you turn it around and initially it sucks, but it only, I'd say, I'd, I'd change that. It sucks because it's not what I was used to doing. So mm-hmm. all of a sudden, like as humans, if something's different, our mind's telling us, well, this is bad. We've got to get back to comfort. Like that's mm-hmm. how we're fucking wired. Yeah. So I think just recognizing that, no, this isn't bad. This is just different to what you were doing. And if you've accepted that what you were doing wasn't wasn't the path you wanted to be on, then yeah. you can start to change mm-hmm. what these emotions kind of um what they, the feelings they bring up on you. Because yeah. if you get to like that point, then like I even know now, if I'm feeling lethargic or kind of shit, if I go to a workout, 45 minutes later, an hour later, I'm feeling fucking good. Mm. Like I'm back. Mm. You know, it's not like, oh, like if someone goes to you, oh man, I'm feeling tired, I'm just going to go to the yeah. gym and then I'll come meet you. Mm. In, like intellectually, we're like, that doesn't make sense. You're tired. Why are you going to yeah. go to the gym? Yeah. But in fact, like it does that. If, I, if you're feeling down, go fucking lift some heavy shit yeah. and it'll just tick, refresh your shit. Yeah, I I've found anyway. Yeah, no, no. And here's the thing: people got to find that thing that they enjoy doing, that they enjoy doing. Um, I like the gym. 
I, I, I like it. Uh, but I still have a trainer, um, even though there are weeks where I can barely afford the pain. But uh, I've learned that when I when I did take when I did take a little break from working with Matt because you know I I didn't have the money. But looking back on it now, I actually did. I just chose not to. I just pressed prioritise, and I realised after you know um, a few months of not being with him how further backwards I actually went. Right. Yeah. There you go. So I said, well, fuck this. You know what? I think that for me now it's it's not a case of if I can afford to do it, can I afford not to do it. Correct. And what we just yeah. touched on there, Britt, links back to, I won't detour us too much, but a previous okay. podcast about um, money and valuing yourself, people push back or they have objections against the price that you charge. You know, it usually takes them going through something like that or going for the cheaper option, getting burnt, and then you find out, fuck, okay, you're paying, this This. This is how much it was worth yeah. to me. Can yeah. I afford, could you afford not to do it properly? Mm. Mm. Um, but anyway, so let's, yeah. let's yeah, yeah. bring it back. And, and, but, but for me also, again, I'm big uh, accountability. I, when, when I've, when I, I, you know, people think I'm really disciplined and I'm not. I'm a lazy cunt, you know, and and I'm and I'm a selfish bastard at times, and and I like to sort of do things my way, you know. I, I am, oh, I am. I'll straight up I put think, my hand up. Yeah, um, so I'm so sure I got, I'm in that fucking boat with you. So, so, but, <laughs> I think we but, all are. but but I know that about myself. I, I know that we, I know where my weaknesses are. So putting putting things in place to knowing that okay, this is where I need help. Or yep. is there I need to outsource? So, so the accountability is really important. Uh, but people need to find what they're into. All right, and people may not like the gym for whatever reason. That's fine. Yeah. Maybe they can. Uh, maybe it's about you know getting on a bike. Maybe it's about doing a martial art. Maybe yeah. it's about playing Going squash. For, for, Just something it is, for yeah. a walk. The thing is that you got to find something you like. And if you don't, if you don't like it, then you even with a trainer, mm-hmm. people will not maintain yeah. some level of consistency. And you don't have to be so strict about it that it's if you you, you miss a you know I miss a day here or there. I pick up here. Or, I, I pick up from somewhere. I, I'm not going to beat myself up over something. Something's come up. Maybe yep. I'm injured. Maybe I'm not. There could be a number of things. You know yep. that get in the way, but. It's about consistency, you know. So, you know, I've been going to the gym now for what seven years consistently, and it's the best thing I've ever done. Yep, I've taken, uh, I, I took a short hiatus over the financial thing, but mate, that that took that took me that really set me back. Yeah, Didn't take right. long to get back into it and to you know, recover, if you will. But fuck me, you, you, you think that when you're doing it, that oh, it's not doing you a great deal overall, but. When yep. you stop it, yeah, and you that's stop when you notice, you really fucking know about yeah. it. You really fucking know about it, and then it seems harder to get back into the swing of yep. things. But, but it's not. And again, what I was trying to mention earlier, earlier on, is that with all the things that I've realised that I have slipped, um, I know that I can. Get, I'll get back onto it. You know, within within three or four weeks, I should have a really good routine and firing again when I was. You know, at my optimum, not that long ago. Yep. So, so, it, so, yeah. So, I'm, I'm optimistic about the whole thing. It's just, you know, perfect. Getting... Well, I'll keep, um, I'll keep track with you. Yeah, man. Well, uh, you should, you should, uh, you, you absolutely should. I've also need to trim down a little bit too, mate. So, yeah, I'm cutting for summer. Getting yeah, the, uh, getting the chassis <laughs> yeah. ready. You know. Oh, uh, so this thing cutting. Yeah, I'm, I, I want to. I just want to. I want to. I want to cut down for life, mate. But, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's. What I was about to touch on that. Cut down um, for so, life, mate. You know, it's, it's shifting from a, um, a, you know, a finite to an infinite thinking about these things. Yeah. It's going, fuck, am I going to the gym because on this date I'm going to look good and then after that it doesn't fucking matter. You yeah. know? And in which case that's when people can, they miss a, sex, uh, miss a session or something gets in the way. That's when they beat themselves mm. up over mm. the shitty, stupid things that happen mm. in the micro mm. because they're not looking at the macro mm. of it. When really you want to have an infinite mindset going into all these things, mm. business, fucking workouts, whatever it is, mm. life, mm. because mm. life just keeps going. It doesn't stop. Yeah. So if you know if you have that end goal in your mind, whether it's in your gym or your business, it's it's, you're not going to get the results as if you go into it with an infinite mindset yeah. of going, cool, guess what? This is going to happen for mm, life. Mm. I'm doing yeah. this. The goal of this is to live longer, yeah. is, you know, whether it's gym. So um, and, and we're doing better. this yeah, forever. <laughs> and live better, man. It's, uh, it's, it's, you know, put in the time, put in time, money, energy into your health and well-being now because if you don't, then you're going to put more money, more time, and more energy into your illness later. Mm, and yep. and I've seen a lot of bloke. Look, I'm 56, man. I'm not, I'm not an elite athlete, but I think I'm punching way above most blokes my age in terms of just 
in terms of my body composition and my fitness and all that kind of stuff, I think I do way better than, but but, but I work at it. Yep. And and I and I see guys younger than me who are complaining about, oh, I got like, you know, I don't have aches and pains. I, I, I get up in the morning, you know, I'm I'm generally okay. I'm not 21, <laughs> but but I'm certainly not uh, already, you know, waiting for a wheelchair. But you know, you see I, you see people getting older than me in their 70s and 80s, and mate, I I I, I don't want to live like that. You know, I don't want to be running around at doctors all day. And there are people out there. That are doing it, and, and and it's because they the earlier they start investing in themselves now, because mm. you know the, you, you, your spirit may be eternal depending on your belief system, but your your body is finite, yep. and it's going to break down regardless. But you can do things to help measure it out. Along that, now before you you talking about you know train you know training for you know life and the finite and, and whatever, it also is important. This is where the identity of who you are is is important. Like. Um, Identif- identifies a fit and a healthy person, you yeah. know. So, in my head, you know, uh, and it, it took. Uh, and it's funny, you know, when I when I got rid of you know, seventy odd kilos, you know, about what, eight years ago, whatever it was now, um, I still had people for a long time who still would still call me a fat cunt. You know, it's a, the, the power of identity. It's really, yeah, yeah. you know, and 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 I've, how did you think of yourself? Oh, I, 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 I definitely didn't see myself as a fat cunt. You know, I mean, I'd joke around with him about, it, but I'd say, you know, um, Craig Harness at Hot House sums up really well, where he said, um, "You're the uh, the no longer a fat cunt." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> like that, which is fu- which is funny, you know. Um, but, but you 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 are very conscious about it, and even the the words you use regarding it, like you say, you didn't lose the weight; you released it. Released it, yeah. Um, so, yeah. and you even talk about, you know. When you were bigger, thinking of yourself as the thinner person of the, the fitter version well, of yourself. Well, yeah, I, I had to. I mean, that was a game changer. E- even though it, it seemed delusional at the time, like how? I mean, how do you look at yourself in the mirror and you know you look like the Michelin Man? And you, but but it, it starts there. It, 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 it's when you when you identify a certain way, then you start thinking a certain way. Yep. You, you like, well, you know, how does a fit and healthy person operate? What do they eat? What's their lifestyle? What do they do every day? And and then life follows up; it catches up with you, yep. rather than the other way. The you know, other it's way like around. it's like when people say, "Well, w- when this happens and when that happens, then yeah, I will, yep. then and, I'll do it." And it never happens, right? Yep. They're it waiting never... for this thing when it's yeah the opposite. You've got to grab the fucking lifetime opportunity. You got to do it, yeah. and the rest catches up. You know, so so. You know, diet's the other thing that's really important to people and, and, and I'm not going to try and, again, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not going to dispense uh, it because we've got people that may be watching and listening to us have, there are some people that are vegetarians, some people are vegan, some people do this, All do sorts. that. And, some and, people and, and, obviously and, would know a lot more about and, the fucking and probably a lot more, yeah, do. way more versed than, than we are when it comes to matter. But I, I, think, um, I think for me if there's a – you know, before I talked about the general things that help, you know, the sleep, the diet. And, and so in a general sense, I, I would just say that whatever whatever, whatever kind of eating pattern or regime <coughs> you're into, I think just try to make – just try to make sure that what you're eating is as whole as possible. Um, Mike Dolce, okay, you know, talks about earth-grown nutrients again. Um, just don't eat fucking Maccas five times a week and fucking KFC you know, and other stupid shit. You know, if it came from a plant, it's fine, but if it was made in a plant, don't fucking touch it or, <laughs> or, or, or don't touch much of it. But 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 even so, I was watching his podcast the other day about um, there's a movie um, called the, the Game Changers. I was about to fucking bring that up. Someone mentioned that to me, uh, my buddy, during the week. I watched the first 15 minutes or so. Yeah. It looks super interesting. Yeah, it's it is interesting. I, I I gotta be honest, I haven't I haven't seen it. Um, but I did see um, um, this bloke whose name escapes you now and I'm sorry, but uh, maybe if I bring it up to you you can put it in the notes and on um, but but Rogan recently, um, very recently had a bloke on who's who's been a couple of times now who was there to to debunk the movie, okay. not not purposely to shut it down, but just yeah. to just to bring up some things where from another perspective, where yeah, let's what just, I thought were let's just iron um, out some truths here, you, you know. And cool. one thing that was interesting about about it was they they said that first of all it was the best movie of its kind, trying to promote veganism 
um, you know, particularly for, when it came for for athletes, but also as a as a as a as an alternative for the wider population. Now that's it. it was the best of it. It was the best of all the ones that were out there in terms of the you know the people they had on there, and it was very persuasive. But they started to poke a few a few holes through it. Um, you know, and I think what was interesting about that movie was the um, well, James Cameron who produced it, right? The, the oh, Hollywood, he? Hollywood director. Okay, yep. Mm. So, okay, so James Cameron, you know, amazing film director, uh, producer. Um, but what what also came out in the wash for this movie is that he's also the owner of the biggest pea plant. Plantation in fucking America, and they're, they're trying to push pea protein. And, right. Okay, so like with a lot of things, it's always follow the money. You, yeah, you yeah. know, but, you know, people people will look at a lot of things, and and we all have confirmation bias. We all have a tendency towards it. Uh, we do, we do, and. So I think it's impossible to be completely objective on on something. But what I find interesting is that when people look at anything and immediately because people are very clever with the use of celebrities, influencers, Mm -hmm. and so they just go, wow, that's that's the gospel and then they just run there. You know, and people got it like, I think when it comes to diet, like I talk about, okay, try and keep it whole food, but... Do the thing that works, you know. Yeah. Do you know? I, I like to look at things all the time, and I'll cherry pick a little bit here, a little bit there, and and I'll find that thing that works for me. And I've gone through different phases. When yeah. I first started, I went just completely low carb because that's what I need to do. Right now, I could not do low carb because I'd have no fucking energy. I wouldn't be able to train. I'd, you know, I'd, I'd yeah. need to have some. But again, just watching what kind of carbs and, and even that, like it's always adapting. I think people think yeah. there's this cookie cutter cool. This is my perfect regime. This is it. I've done it for five days now. It's good. This is. What it's going to be forever when it's no it's always adapting you're trying stuff you learn something new you're speaking to someone you listen to yeah. a podcast you're like well that sparks a thought and you're like wait a minute maybe i was feeling a little bit low let's give this a shot okay maybe it worked maybe it didn't mm. you implement that you bring that in so you are always adapting and fucking and you know trying to optimize things yeah so and and i mean they say that your body, your cells, what, on average seven years, you, you, you sort of, the cells that today were completely changed over in seven years. So so your body, cellular-wise, is completely different to what it was seven, eight years ago. Yep. You're still the same, but the cells are completely regenerated. But okay. but they're different. Yep. But, but they're different. And and so your needs adapt and change over time. Not My needs are now different to what they were 10 years ago. Yours, okay. no doubt, will be the same. So I think this is why it's important that people, um, I think that particularly as you get older, it's good to go once a year and get yourself a, a full set of bloods and just see what's going on. Um, I went through a phase where I was going to, you know, I was getting blood tests all the time and I was getting really maniacal about it. And, and I remember my doctor said to me, look, fucking just answer me this question. He goes, how do you feel right now? So I'm feeling fine. He said, and don't worry about the, you know, the the the, the minutiae and and you know because I, I you know I was reading somewhere about um, you know inflammation markers and and cortisol and and, and even when it came to you know cortisol it's a stress hormone okay mm-hmm. um, where our cortisol levels change a lot during the course of the day depending on where we're at so mm-hmm. you know just because someone's cortisol level is um, could be low but that could be because it's low at that point of the day Definitely. two hours and later stress. it could fucking spike because of something stress. a stre- stress yeah. stressful situation yep. uh, cortisol ca- ca- spikes ca- ca- drop show, it'll half your IQ in seven minutes yeah, it yeah. also affects yeah. your immune system yeah. um, inflammation yeah. super bad for you it yeah. makes you make makes you be fucking stupid you know it also you know it, what the opposite the body sorry I'll just jump in there yeah, yeah, yeah. the um Opposite of cortisol is, or your body's kind of response to it, is a thing called DHEA. Yep. Which is released uh, through gratitude and love, really. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you're when you're grateful about when you're true, not just saying grateful, when you're like oh, when you're feeling it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's gratitude's a feeling, it's an emotion. If you yeah, you, you you feel it, you, yep. you you feel that sort of stuff. Yeah. And your body releases yeah. DHEA, which is the opposite to cortisol. Yeah. It, it drops your cortisol level. You more um, switched on. You're attentive. It actually boosts immune. Immune system, um, yeah. yeah, just uh, and, that, and 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 again, this this all stuff ties into the mental health aspect too. If uh, definitely, if if we can have um, you know a control level of cortisol, and and again, it's something I've been completely shit out of late. Add to my list of things to do is um, meditation. Mm-hmm. Um, I do it every Saturday. It's fucking awesome. So what? So what's your what, what's your regime, or what, what, how do you meditate? 
Um, well, I go to a place in Fairfield called Alter Ego. One of the guys in my business networking group here is a PT out of the gym. Um, basically, it's free every Saturday morning. It's 9 a.m. It's just a guided meditation session. Mm-hmm. Um, I tried a few of my own and kind of struggled with it. I didn't know what fucking meditation was or the mm-hmm. point of it or what mm-hmm. we're trying to do. Um, mm-hmm. So I went down to that and it's fucking awesome. Dude, Hamish, who runs it, is is great. Um, so run us through. So what happens when you rock up? Uh, so you rock up. There's usually about 15 to 20 people um, kind of sitting you know, on chairs there. Um, basically, you go around the room and just do what they call dump the funk where you'll just fucking say anything that's sitting on the surface that's happened that week or what's going on in your life. Just fucking anything that's really on the top layer of your mind, you'll just fucking say it just to kind of release it. Um, then you close your eyes and he just basically guides you through different, you know, I guess, thinkings. He wants you to, you know, he'll talk to you like, you know, think about some something or someone that you truly love and focus on that. Um, and then he'll do that for kind of 15 or 20 minutes and then he'll just kind of let you go off into, you know, your meditation state. Um, and then he'll bring you back about half an hour later, it goes for an hour. Um, but it's fucking it's been super awesome. You just get up. There's just a sense of clarity and I guess the best way to – is that I got to interpret it was he's like, you know, we're using, um, the mind is so fucking complex and you can handle so many things at once. I'm always thinking about this fucking tangent and this thread and this is going on, um, which is great. It's amazing to be able to do that. But then when we want to try to shut it down or to calm ourselves, we're using the same machine. It's like, so it's kind of, doesn't make sense. It's counterintuitive. Mm. We're trying to use our brain to calm down our brain. Yep. That doesn't make sense. So that's yep. the kind of point of meditation is these thoughts do come up and they pop up, but it's just cool. I acknowledge that thought and you can just let it go. And you're just trying to, yeah, just that sense of clarity and, um, and stillness, mm. um, which well, I found super handy. Well, even this idea of um, trying to empty your head is impossible. You're never going to empty your head of any kind of thought. Like you said, just acknowledging it. That's yeah. that's. Um, We're not trying to fight it. What, We're recognizing it, that those thoughts are there and come up. One one good thing that, that the thing that's helped me the most for meditating that as, as someone who is an overthinker who can't sit still for a <laughs> fucking moment, who's always you know, needing to do something or, you know, busy or what have you. Well, mind you, I'm good at sitting down doing fuck all. No, I can do that. But <laughs> No, I am. I'm very good at that, actually. I can do fuck all. I've, uh, in fact, the, you know, I did the other day, Ben. Let me tell you the other day. I, I told my, I said, I, no, and I had no shame about it. I, I spent a whole day, I, I just watched fucking YouTube and I was watching good stuff, mind you. It was very, very productive kind of stuff. But I managed to actually do fuck all for the day. Just, <laughs> I didn't do an email. I didn't make a phone call. I didn't take a phone call. I I didn't do fuck or other than just um, and I actually binge watched something other and I and I binge watched something which I haven't done forever. There's a, there's a series on Stan called Godfather of Harlem uh, with um, fucking I forget the uh, I forget the, the actor's name, but he's the black girl, the bung fucking eye, um, fucking genius, mate. If you want to look at this, something that's fucking mad. If right. you if you love your, if you love your organised crime, if you love your and I was all set in uh, Harlem in the seventies. Uh, you know, it's 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 mafia. It's the nation of Islam. It's um, it's the you know the Black Panthers. It's it's right. all New the, York all, in all the seventies is so fucking interesting and fascinating oh, to me. Dude, it's dude. got to be the closest thing to urban warfare that fucking we've had. Dude, it's, it's fucking nuts. It was fucking nuts. Um, it's it's um, it was good for anyway. So, um, but but. The the meditation I found has helped me, and and I will. Uh, this is the one I'm going to go back to because I found it's been used. It's called binaural beats. So it's, it's they're not guided meditations. That you, you you need headphones for them. Yep. You must have headphones for them, and you can get all series of these ones on YouTube. There's the, there's different ones to help you because to get different into frequencies. D- different, yeah, d- d- delta yep. state, you know, yep. alpha state. Because we're we're running beta, high beta when we're awake, and and alpha is is a good place to be where that's where your creativity is. That's where you're kind of feeling pretty calm, yep. pretty pretty cool. Uh, you know, data and theta is like real the real creative states, the dream states, the yep. sleep the sleep states. But but to get into alpha, right, which is really good. So. Um, and you can just find binaural beats, alpha, alpha, you know, alpha yep. waves, and and you don't need more than maybe ten minutes. And basically, what happens is is that it, you it creates this weird kind of noises and pulses. So, for example, the one I listen to it uses um, the ocean, and it just does these different weird sounds and bells and shit left so it, it basically is confusing the left and right hemisphere of your brain into a state where it has no other choice but to kind of slow down if you, it it's that's how i understand yeah, the te- cool. technology but for people that don't want to do the guided stuff because they can't stand the fucking voice that they're listening to or yep. they can't relate to the imagery that's being portrayed or they just can't 
do their Whatever own room. thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, just because cool. it does it for you. It, it's again, I'm a lazy cunt. Yep. Uh, uh, you know, anything that's going to cut the workload or, or help me at least be more efficient, I'm fucking in. I'm signed up. Definitely. So buy normal beats. So that they they're good for sleeping as well, aren't they? Yeah, they're getting into sleep. Yeah, yeah man. The, I mean, you should try that instead of YouTube. There's different. Um, there's different um, there's ones that, that do, as I said, for sleep, for, you know, for creativity, for alertness, for all kinds of stuff. But it's, the thing is it's easy. You don't do anything but just sit, sit and relax and just let it it'll do it for you. So it, it, yeah. you, you can't ask for anything better than that and it's fucking free. So, um, so that's a that's another good tip for people. And again, yep. meditation being linked linked to improve, you know, uh, levels, improve mental health, or certainly at least being able to cope better, yep. you know, with your with your day to day kind of stuff. So, Definitely. and one other another um, actionable thing just popped in my head, um, which someone mentioned to me recently, and I was like, that's a fucking good idea. Um, but basically, if if you do feel that you're getting into, you know, a sense, uh, a period of depression or, you know, productivity is dropping or you're just not quite yourself, um, one thing you can do is write down three things that you love doing, three activities you love doing, and mm-hmm. then you go, when was the last time you've done them? Mm-hmm. And usually you wouldn't have done these things in the last three to six months if you are getting into, say, you know, these depressed states. If you're, if you're aware to go, all right, fuck, I'm not feeling right, what the fuck is up, you know, if you're conscious enough of that to start going, all right, let's improve stuff, that's a really good thing to do because mm. it just paints a super black and white picture. You're going, fuck, mm. I love doing these things. I've written them down. I've got mm. them here. Mm. I haven't fucking done them in the last six months. Mm. And you go, okay, well, maybe that's why I'm feeling a little bit down. Let's go mm. do them. And then suddenly you pick yourself up and you're back yeah. and you're getting out of those fucking, out of those ruts and back into, um, you know, proper, I guess, yeah. um, mindset and behavior. Mm. Now, the other thing that's really good um, I touched on before is that um, – we we're social animals and we need to connect and and even though we're more connected via social media we're probably now a more isolated and more lonely society than, than ever but um just to be able to even you know pick up the phone talk to someone go out have a lunch with someone i um you know i've got a couple of mates who every week or every couple of weeks but we just make a point of going out and just getting a foe somewhere a fa Sorry for those Vietnamese <laughs> people who are going to tell me you said it wrong. Um, but to go out and get a cheap meal somewhere, sit down, look yeah. at each other, talk some shit, yep. you know, and and just kind of just just blow off a bit of steam, you know, talk about your stuff. And, and blokes especially, we, we, we don't tend to do much of that because, again, um, we're, we're, we're wanting to, sh- to show the, the veneer of – Everything's right. We got it under control. You know, we're not. We're not a weak cunt. We're not going to fucking say this or say that. Or mm-hmm. we don't want to ad- ad- admit to people that maybe we're having a tough week, or maybe our finances aren't going great, or you know, things on the home front may not be rocking, or things of the ki- whatever. It, insert yep. whatever it is that's occupying your mind, yep. and 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 potentially could send you off into you know a, a, you know a, a, a two day bender yep. um is just, just to go and sit and, and so women tend to do that because they they're just they're expressive they're emotional beings they're they're yep. expressive they'll sit there and and nothing necessarily gets fixed it's just this it's just the fact that they had a chance to re- release that yep definitely ca- kind of thing yep. yeah and i guess yeah some of i guess some of the stigma you know about you know men is that, that you know showing emotion is something that wasn't done there was this hiding emotion and you know putting on that okay sweet well it's fucking time to man up yeah um you know all these sort of things have led to yeah guys being very poor at communicating how they're feeling what's going on in their mind um but it's they're, de- yeah, they're poor they're, but they're they're, they're poor at it but only because they're, they're told that it's not it's it's not the done thing they're not encouraged to do it and they haven't had any good you know half 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 the kids in this world now are raised by single single parent families for, so they probably don't have much of a male role model, if any, or a good one mm-hmm. around. So they don't have a lot of examples. So, yeah, they probably see their mums being vulnerable and having a cry and a box of Kleenex and the chockies with their girlfriends on the phone or around, but, but that's not that's, – that's a woman. You, you see, so yeah, yeah. that behaviour they see is synonymous with being female or being, yep. you know, being a, being a woman. But and they don't see men doing that or enough men doing that to see that. Oh, okay, so you know they just see the rough, tough, fucking yep. thing it's not going the norm on. Yet. It, you know, I mean, I saw something on the telly the other day, um, and it was um, this lunch where they had they they got together. Um, somehow they managed to get together. Um, 
a whole room of uh, people over 100, over 100. The oldest woman in the room was 110. She was a sprightly fucking thing, right? <laughs> um, there were very few men, right? Yeah, so at the moment, let's say that women are living four years on average longer, even though women have it fucking harder in life. I, I believe they have it harder in life. They do. They've got to put up with the most shit, the most of everything, you know, especially in single mothers have to put up with mothering. You know, I... I I am fucking shit when it comes to dealing with kids. So, so I take my hat off to women that deal with that. I, I I've got my patience for, for children, and is is fucking well close to zero. I'm I'm the worst. No, I'm fucking the worst. I'm the worst when it comes to dealing with kids, little ones. No, I'm serious, man. I'm yeah, serious. Hey, I'm being honest with. You. I'm being I'm honest. The same. With you. Don't, I mean, don't, I don't fucking. No, don't fucking. I, I see shit with kids and it's just get me the fuck away. Hey. Like, I don't want to know about it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not interested in. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. And maybe it's rude. Maybe it's not nice for me to say that sort of thing. But I'm a loving person. But it comes to little kids. <laughs> fucking nah. Nah. So 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 that that's where I really admire and respect women for the fact that they. You know, and maybe you'd say, well, they've got no other choice but to do it. Maybe so. But the fact that they got to deal with that and the stresses of raising children, particularly on their mm-hmm. own, if they have no support, no financial support, no support from partners and everything. So, and yet they still manage to live four years longer. That's extraordinary to me. Yeah, I mean... And also, guys do a lot of fucking stupid shit. <laughs> there's a lot of fucking, oh, we do. Yeah, we, a lot well, of videos we all... on YouTube of guys <laughs> oh. doing ridiculously stupid shit and falling yeah. off roofs and ladders on top of yeah, fucking but, houses. But, and yeah. you just look at that and you're like, T- if you put three females together for an afternoon and a box of wine, they wouldn't end up in that situation. <laughs> They'd be laughing and talking to each other. Yeah, but yeah, guys. When there's something that happens when males get together in a group and these ideas start bouncing, and the next thing you're looking at it and you're just like, yeah. how did this situation? get to here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like like the hangover type <laughs> yeah. scenario, yeah. Uh, isn't it? But no, it's true. We, I, I, I just really admire women for it. Women put up with more shit than 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 they deserve to. In in even in good relationships, you know, my my uh, you know my my Mrs Connie, she she's got the shit into the stick in this relationship <laughs> you know, without question. I love her to death, but she she really you know. I think I'm a good partner and a good husband, but if you look over our track record, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got uh, a lot to answer for. I, I could, I could really do a lot better, and not, not because I'm mean to. I'm, I'm just saying that. It just and I, and I see it, it's very common. Just women just put up with so much more than what they really should, and yet somehow they're so forgiving. And so whether it's because of their nurturing or their compassion factor, but um, but no, you know, hats off to women. Full respect and God bless all of them. Beautiful goddesses, a lot of them. Yep. Um, but uh, we have we have a lot we can learn from them um, in terms of their ability to be vulnerable, to communicate, to Definitely. express, and to um, you know just to be able to do that. And 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 us blokes, we could really take a page or three out of that book in terms of being able to do those things yep. to for our own just for, for sure. our own um, me- me- mental health and sanity yep. to, to 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 function. And and if more men uh, can do that, but again we. We need more people, you know, like us, we're having a discussion now and, and for more people to be more open and on, honest about, yep. listen, this is this is how I rolled or this is how I've rolled or this is how I do things now and this is how my life has changed. Um, and the more and more people, so, again, because younger guys need to see more examples of it yep. uh, and people that are living proof, actual, you know, they're not just talking it but they're actually yep. being that person and, and they can demonstrate that and, and that is seen in how. It's obvious, you know, they're, they're happier, they're, they're, they're more content, they're more open, they're more honest. Again, the, the, these things over time are, are going to be seen to be what they are, yep. yeah? So... Uh, so this is why it's important that you know, blokes like myself really super honest, even if it may make some people cringe at times about, well, what are you saying? You don't need to say that. You know, like Jeff Lang once called me the king of the overshare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but I don't know, man. I, I think it's important that, um, that we, we put these things out there and we're open and we put on the table because it's the truth. Yep. It's the truth. So yep, 100%. And you know, even that male suicide rates are fucking oh, enormous. Um, terrible. Depression in men's were currently in November. 
um, you know, which is a great month to raise money and awareness for. How does Stu go? Our Stu Burger, our, our own very own Marshall yeah, Street's yep. own Stu Watts. How do yeah. you go? Look, he grows a meaner mustache than me, but uh, <laughs> sorry, Stu. It is. Uh, it might thicken up coming the last week, but it's getting there. Um, <laughs> but even that, we've got a social event this Friday, um, and we will donate five dollars to everyone through the door on that, um, mm. just to kind of yeah give um, some funds towards that because. Men just suck at communicating this thing, and usually it kind of leads to them getting into their own sort of jail that we built themselves, whether that's in a job or relationship that we're not have you happy with, mm. and we haven't communicated this along the way. Mm. And before you know it, um, guys get to 40, 50, and they just feel like there's no way out. Um, unfortunately, a lot of them turn to things like suicide yeah. Um, yeah, when really they're, you know, there is ways out, communicating this really comes down to clear communication, mm. um, which is something Stu's fucking awesome at it. Um, but it's, yeah, being able just to talk about how you're feeling, what's going on. Mm. Um, it just, yeah, it stops things building up and getting to that mm. fucking point where you feel like there's no other option and there's fucking nothing yeah. else can happen. Well, I can tell you at 46 or roughly, 46, 47, yeah, where, where I was at my heaviest, same thing. I just, I was unhappy, you know, being in an unhappy marriage, incredibly, uh, you know, overweight, un- you know, uh, incredibly unfit. Just th- my, that was my that was my prison, and and it, you know, you, early on in the podcast, you talked about how we, you know we learn through you know getting to a, a point where it's like breaking point. Well, it's not just young people. I mean, us older people do it too. Yep. Um, the question is, you know, do you heed the warning? You know, what what do you, what do, you do about it? And, yep. and sometimes how bad does it have to get before you fucking start you know, taking action? You know, and and sometimes what we think is rock bottom isn't always rock bottom, but but for some, it can get to a point where you get beyond it, and and, and there's no there's no turning back. But but I, my doctor told me, you know, you could walk out of here and you could drop dead of a heart attack and a stroke. You know, and right, yeah. When was this? How old were you? I was 46 or thereabouts. Right. So that was, you know, people say, well, what, you know, what, where did it all start for you? And that was the catalyst, that that, that, and then having a DMT experience. And we'll talk about that in another, not, not another podcast, right? Because <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm about to go off and do some of that fro- toad venom, that 5-MEO. Oh, uh, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yes, I am. <laughs> um, and um, I'll, I'll let you know about it. But anyway... But that was really the where the youth. That's where the, the, I hit the bottom of the yep. you know the valley and started making my way up up the mountain again. Mm-hmm. Um, so just to be told that you're not going to see fifty, you won't see your kids grow up. Yep. And when you're and when you're told for real that you know now now we really are talking life and death, and in fact you you are already there. You're at the precipice of potentially dropping yep. dead, walking out of here. Um, it does what well, did something to me, you know. Yep. For, even for some people, that's not even enough. But, um, but yeah, man, it, uh, I, I don't know why the human condition is such that we, why we just can't fucking learn from life's little slap on the head. Why is it sometimes we have to wait, you know? Like I'm, I'm that learner. You know, I've got to get a sledgehammer in the fucking mouth, you know, mm-hmm. and sp- <laughs> spit a few teeth out, and then go, oh shit, okay. Yep. I don't know why, but I'm wired that way. I'm getting better, but I still find that I, you know, I still learn the hard way. I still, you know. <laughs> but then I get, and then, but now being aware of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I keep telling people, you know, man, I'm no fucking expert at this. I'm just, I'm getting better. Yep. And I'm, that's, get, I'm and getting that, better. Yeah, I'd, I'd say just being, it's kind of like, you know, the journey of personal development. It's never ends. Being on the journey is the personal development. It, totally, it, just, it, 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 it is, and you know, and I, I think of myself, shit, man. They say that the average artist. I mean, I, I'm not an artist, strictly speaking, but you know, the average creative, artistic person is f- 57. Is is the average so age? I heard it was less than that. That if you're, well, yeah, well, maybe it was well, under 50. Well, well, maybe maybe it is. You, you know, m- maybe it is. I mean, so, even athletes. Can you believe elite athletes also have a have a have a low average? Um, it, like we're talking about, you know, in America, you know, you, you yeah, X NBA, X NFL, yep. X. I mean, yeah, it's amazing. Well, I mean, they've been redlining their fucking bodies for a decade or a decade and a half, kind of pushing at the maximum they can get out of it. Where do so well, it, it's that, I mean, but, but it's got but, to take a toll. But, but the other thing too is that what they alluded to was about this whole thing about connection. A lot of them, first of all, don't know who their real friends are. Okay. All right. I mean, you're fucking balling, and everyone wants to be a friend. Everyone wants to fucking suck your cock, right? <laughs> you don't know. It, it's all good for a while to accept 
free, you know, inducements and, and shit like that. But, but then you just don't know who, you know, and they have their issues too. They, they're under enormous pressure to perform. They have obligations. They have things to do. They have sponsors to keep happy. Yep. They have to behave certain ways. Mm-hmm. Um, their, their lives are somewhat controlled and, yep. and that certain things they want to be able to do but they can't. Um, they, they have they these, know they, it, they've built this little social jail that they're in. Yeah, you know, and, and they just don't know who their friends are for the most part. You know, so what happens is from and with rock stars and elite athletes, once they're out of the limelight, once, you know, and, and you've been used to this adulation and it's been a drug, you know, people loving you, attention on you, and then all of a sudden that, that disappeared because you're no longer that guy. You're yep. no longer that person who, who, who plays for the yeah. fucking Lakers yep. or for the fucking Clippers or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and then all of a sudden, and, and so then no one wants to know you. So straight away, all these people are out of your life. Yep. No one to talk to. You, you feel like shit. You, you, you feel like a failure. Well, you've lost your, your identity. And I guess a lot of people, yeah. for them, that is who they are. When yeah. that's, and when people have their their identity stripped from them, that's when people can really fall apart. Mate, absolutely. And and that's where they seek their validation from. You know, it's like I, I, I only feel good when I've got, you know, yep. when I've got coke and hookers around me or, you know, I've got people wanting my autograph or yep. I've got people, you know, wanting to engage with me and chase me down the street and all this kind of shit. So, yep. Even I heard something um, interesting about that. Um, it was a talk, I can't remember, it was, yeah, probably internet somewhere, but they're basically saying um, if you have your values, so your set of values that are actually fucking important, you're not like social values that we people kind of make up to mm. think to fit in, but your actual <laughs> core fucking values, mm. um, if you lose them, that's when you'll usually slip back into addiction. Um, yeah. Because you'll, those those values that you hold true and that are important to you mm. are lacking, whether that is, you know, relationship or love or connection with people, mm. whatever mm. those things you value are, when you lose them, that's when yeah. that's when you can slip back into to addiction and old patterns. Yeah, yeah. Because well, when you, you just create that positive feedback loop around if like if the mm. things that are important to you is, you know, your fucking work and your family, if you're set up so that you know all your fucking, everything at work is structured down, you people know what they're doing, why they're doing it, when they're doing it, your work is fucking good, you're working with good clients because you put in the work previously to make mm. a good fucking system and mm. you also allow time to be with your family and because mm. you know that that's important to you, mm. then, you know, you're not going to find yourself in five years where you're like, fuck, I overworked and my relationship suffered from it. Mm. All these things are in place to look after those values because you're aware of it mm. and you're much likely then to fucking start smoking again or fucking get back onto the coke or whatever it is mm-hmm. because you're taking care of those values that you've recognised mm. that you mm. need. Well, the thing to understand too is that values do change as well. People's values can, can change oh, over time. Nothing, and, nothing of this is and, set and forget. Yeah, and I, and I think that uh, these are things that people need to look at from time to time and just go, okay, well... What are my values today in this current? Because my values now are different to what they were ten years ago. Know. And they probably will change, change again in ten years and now yep. uh, a, 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 as well. You know, I mean, my you know one of my one of my key values, example, is is to is to is connection. You know, is to be con- is to feel connected to people. Now, whether that's with my wife or whether it's with my friends or whether it's um, you know um, colleagues, it's it's to feel like I. I belong, and that I've got, um, and and I've got, and I've also got somewhere to contribute towards. You know, I I, I feel you know I value contribution, I value connection. So yep. so that, to have that, so that is more important than I used to value work before. You know, work before was it's all about work, but then again, that was more of an escape mechanism. You know, I thought I valued work, but really it was about you know. Getting away getting from away. family, getting away from my marriage, getting away from my children, getting away, you know. So th- those things, those things have changed, uh, and th- dare I say they will they will e- evolve and change over time. I think the key is that people just need to uh, get clear because I, I think once you're clear on your values or you're clearer, mm-hmm. then decisions become that become easier to make. One hundred percent. You don't have as much conflict around. Oh fuck! What yep. do I do? Do this? And, or do that? And you can find the strength to do the shit that you want of. If you know one of your values is fuck, I've just been told from the doctors that I'm going to fucking die and not see my kids. Mm. All right, health is now a value to me. Mm. Then when you wake up at fucking, you know, you'll go to the gym the next week fucking like that because you've just been told you're going to fucking die. Mm. Once that in- initial fucking inspiration and motivation dries off, which it does, mm. when your alarm goes off at fucking 4.45 in the morning, you're not going to roll back over and go to sleep because you're like, I, I know why I'm doing this. Yep. You have that why. Yep. You yep. have that. You understand mm. the value and why the fuck you're doing mm-hmm. this and why it's an ongoing game. Mm. 
then it's it's much easier to do the things that you would deem hard or uncomfortable because mm. you know why you're doing them. Mm. You've got to get fucking fit. Yep. Super easy. It's like yep. if you don't know why your business exists and mm. you're doing all these hours, those hours are just going to get harder and harder and longer yep. and longer yep. because you don't really know why the fuck you're doing it. Do you mm. it to contribute, to help artists? Are you mm. here to learn? You know, mm. what, are you, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? Mm. And then you, it's – the motivation isn't needed because it doesn't spike. Mm. You're just in this fucking, this constant neutral of doing and action-based mm. fucking taking action because you know why you're doing it. You've got yeah, that fucking yeah. North Star. You yeah. understand it. And it's your identity. It's, it's yep. who you are. It's how you roll. This, yep. this, is, this is how you operate in your day-to-day. So, all right, mate. All right, so that was a good one. It was a good one. It was yeah. a real good one. No, I enjoyed I there that. Some good, there's some good, there's some... I like that there are some actual takeaways that people could go and action off if they're feeling in a fucking yeah. in a rut. Or mm. I think the big thing is recognizing it, going, fuck, I'm not myself or I'm down. Mm-hmm. Or And sometimes just not feeling anything. You're like, fuck, I'm usually super happy and I'm just flat. Um, you know, recognizing that and then looking for strategies, plans, ways to kind of bring yourself back mm-hmm. out of it yeah. and correct it and bring yourself back on path. Yeah. So, yeah. So have a look just to just stop and take an inventory of life and it, it may not be fun because – There'll be things, if you're honest with yourself, that yep. aren't working and are or you're not doing, but that's okay. You, yep. you, you know that there's the, you can always pull yourself out of there. You didn't you didn't just overnight fall into that. Yep. So Sometimes you've got to go and shine a light on those fucking dark places inside and see it. what's there. That's it. So look at your diet. Just if, if you're eating a lot of shit, at least, at least you can start eliminating – just processed don't eat sugar, just just fast just, food. just yeah, fast food and and that shit. And try and drink sleep. some more water. Try and get a bit more sleep. Some actual, actually, is one thing if, I learned recently. The yeah. UN actually put um, shift work on the list of carcinogens. So oh, that's yeah. how bad it is to yeah. fucking to miss sleep. Totally, totally, um, totally. It'll fucking kill you. You know, go get some counselling. Go talk to a friend. Um, you know, if yep. you, if you don't want to talk to your friends or you feel embarrassed about talking about your situation. There's plenty of there's plenty of help out there available, yep, and and out. most and a lot of it's free. You can get ten, you can get mental health plans for your GP for free. Get ten visits at least to get you up and running. Um, so the, the, there's a lot of help out there. If you just yep. Google mental health um, in in your city, in your town, in your country, wherever you may be, yep. um, and go and talk to someone because it's easy to talk to a stranger. I find myself as a as a mentor. The shit I hear from people, man, stuff people tell me that they've been holding on to twenty years or more. You know, it's it's extraordinary because they don't know me. You know, and, yep. and so bleh, it, it's almost like I've got a sign on my head. But but I get it because I've done I've done the same myself. Yep. So um, so no, go definitely talk, find someone out there. Yeah, yeah, find someone out there you can at least offload because just just the fact that you can just put it out and offload it and yep. release yourself from that, or at least help to definitely release a, a, a little bit, take yep. a little bit of the pressure off. Uh, it's it's a it's a start. Yep. You're starting um, to turn that ship. You're starting yeah. to change your fucking the course of the direction you're yeah. on. Yeah, sleep. Connection, friends, yep. and um, sun, exercise, move. Your body needs to move, you know. And um, and hopefully, you, know, you guys will uh, will you know will will be in a better place. Yep. If you start taking a few steps, because uh, yeah. So you so you you're going to keep an eye on me. You'll know you'll you'll know from podcast. You'll see me on the podcast. You'll know. Yep. You know. I mean, I'm I'm a good bullshitter, but I can't bullshit a bullshitter. <laughs> so. Anyway, so I'm, I'm on notice now, no, which good. is good. No, I like it. I like it. I like it. I like to be put on notice. I, uh, I like the fact now that I know that, uh, you know, yep. Accountability. Bit, yeah, accountability. A bit of accountability to get back on track again. So Nice. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening. Another thank episode you. of No Guts, No Glory podcast. Done. Dusted. In the can. Jack the Bear. Yeah, mate. And Bennett Dana Ferguson. Ferguson. Yep. My man. Love you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you so much. All good, my G. Always good to be here. All right, so we'll uh, be nice to each other. More importantly, be nice to yourselves. We love you, fuckers. That's right. Catch you later. Peace.